I researched the worst financial bubbles in history, and it's surprising and a little bit scary how similar some of these bubbles were to our current day situation. Like if I were to read some of these situations to you without you knowing what time period it was from, you might mistake it for our current day situation right now. I feel like there's a lot to learn from these bubbles, and honestly, a lot of money you could probably save yourself by educating yourself on what's happened in the past, what these things look like so you can look out for them and avoid them in the future. First up is the most famous bubble of all time, and that's tulip mania. Tulip mania happened around 1630 after the Dutch imported some tulips into their country and decided that they really, really, really liked them. So much so that tulips became highly prized and powerful status symbols of, of like wealth and prestige. And tulips were kind of like the original flex. Like you'd invite somebody over to your house, they, they'd like come over, you'd be like, come on, let's, let's have some you know, fried salmon chap. And, and they'd come over and then you'd take, take them through a stroll through your gardens and they'd see this tulip there and they'd be like, oh dang, like what, what the, how did you get that? And you'd be like, oh, it's like, it's no big deal, you know? Just picked it up from the market today. And they'd be like, oh my gosh, I didn't realize you were such a baller, Fred. And, they, and Fred would be like, it's not a big deal. But secretly, Fred had taken you to that specific spot just so you actually knew what a real big deal Fred was. They're kind of like the original NFTs or the original Rolex or the original Lamborghini. And the reason tulips were valuable was because obviously they were rare. They, they weren't native to there. They had to be imported. There wasn't a lot of them. And so there was this scarcity the effect of like not everyone could have them so you had the haves and the haves nots and because they became so highly sought after these tulip markets sprang up where you know you could sort of trade tulips as if they were like modern day stocks and people traded these flowers for like unreal amounts of money a single tulip was often sold for the same price as a pair of horses or like a carriage and some like rare exotic tulips cost more than a house. The more I think about this, are, are they gonna be saying this about like NFTs, like, you know, 500 years in the future, they'll be like, yeah, back in, back in the day, they used to they used to pay more than a house for some of these JPEG images. Like, obviously I think NFT technology is here to stay. I think there's a lot that's gonna expand around it, but I, I do wonder sometimes if maybe the way that we currently, yeah, you know, utilize NFTs, maybe one day we'll be seen like that. So anyway, they're buying tulips for more than houses, which you gotta know there's some dude that like went and like paid more than a house for a tulip, didn't know how to take care of it because he just sucks at gardening and straight up killed this thing after he buys it. Like this isn't a story that I'm I, like found in history, but I know it happened. Like they're, they're, it would have been me. Like I would have bought the tulip, I would have planned this thing be like perfect. And then I'd woken up the next day and like bugs would have eaten it and I'd be like, Gosh dang it, my tulip. Anyway, this whole mania lasted till February 1637 when a few major players decided to all cash out on their tulips at the same time. Apparently they realized that like tulips weren't really that cool and it was actually, you know, a lot cooler to own a castle than it was to own a tulip. And all these players selling at the same time caused a market dip, which caused an absolute panic where everyone tried to sell their tulips all at once, causing the entire house of cards to collapse overnight. Second up is the South Sea Bubble of 1720. Fun fact, this is literally where the term bubble actually was invented or comes from. And this all started when the British government gave exclusive trading rights to the South Sea Company to, you know, go to South America and get things to trade and then bring them back. And during this whole time, there was another company called the East India Trading Company that had been like hugely successful. They went to India, they established a trading route and they were like making a ton of money. So all these budding entrepreneurs were like, hey, we're the next East India Trading Company. We're the South Sea trading company. And this is kind of how like modern day companies will come along and be like, we're going to be the next Uber, or we're going to be the next Airbnb, or we're going to be the next Ethereum. Unfortunately for the South Sea trading company, they weren't able to make this business profitable and it ended up being kind of a failure. They decided to do the right thing though, cutting costs, informing investors and learning from their failures. Just kidding. Of course they didn't do that. They spread false rumors all over Britain that they'd found vast riches all over South America, that it was just this continent of just like pure wealth, trying to convince everyone to invest more money into their company so that they could keep living like ballers. And it worked. Average investors bought stock in the South Sea Trading Company based on the rumors and the price skyrocketed. They even made it super easy for investors to buy stock by allowing them to pay for their shares in installments instead of having to buy it all up front at once. And during this time, share prices went from $128 
all the way up to a thousand dollars and because of this because it was going up in price so much because of everyone was buying into these rumors that there was fast riches people were just clamoring to buy more and more of the south sea trading company stock but eventually the giant house of cards collapsed after rumors started to spread that they were bribing officials and making everything up and there actually was no profit no vast riches in South America, and they actually had nothing to support the value of their stock going so high. Third up is the Mississippi bubble, and this bubble actually happened at about the same time. France was plagued by debt and currency shortages in the early 17th century. So Duke d'Orleans, who was in charge at the time, turned to one of his close buddies, John Law, to fix all these issues. And John Law was actually a pretty smart guy when it came to math and when it came to finances. And so John Law went and he created this bank. And this bank started issuing paper notes that were supposed to be backed and redeemable by gold and silver. And this whole bank and paper notes thing actually worked at first and John became incredibly successful. Riding the coattails of his own success, he decided to form the Mississippi Trading Company. This was similar to the South Sea Trading Company and the East India Trading Company. Again, this was kind of like the thing to do back then if you were like a budding entrepreneur. And he raised money to go after the rumored vast amounts of gold in this strange new place discovered called Louisiana. Then he went on to sell stock in his company and as these rumors started to circulate, of these vast amounts of gold located in Louisiana, people started clamoring to buy more and more of this stock. And the price of this stock started to skyrocket, and John Law, wanting to keep up with the demand, started printing more money than he actually had gold and silver to back it up with. And eventually, as time went on, people started to realize that this vast amount of gold that was rumored to be in Louisiana wasn't actually there, and that the Mississippi Trading Company didn't actually have a product or any sort of revenue to back its incredible price appreciation that it had experienced. And at the same time, they started to doubt the backing of this paper money that John Law was printing. And so everyone went to the bank all at once to try to redeem their paper money for gold and silver, only to discover that the bank didn't have nearly enough gold and silver to back this paper money. John Law went on the run, the bubble burst, and the entire economy collapsed. Fourth up is railway mania. And this one was surprisingly really similar to the dot-com bubble. It basically happened after this disruptive new technology was introduced called the railway. People got really excited about railroads and started imagining all the different ways that they would change the world as we know it. And because of this, soon railroad stocks started skyrocketing as people started speculating on the future value of this railroad system that was being built. This speculation caused prices to balloon higher and higher until eventually everything collapsed. And I hope you guys are starting to notice a pattern, and if you're not, I'll point it out at the end. Fifth up, is the Florida land boom. After World War I, Florida started developing this reputation as this tropical paradise getaway. This caused tons of people to start buying up land in Florida, speculating on the future price of what that land might be worth. Soon, prices started doubling every few months. People were throwing their entire life savings at Florida land. Even Charles Ponzi jumped in on the action. The infamous scammer who would get the modern day term Ponzi scheme from, during this whole land rush, he tricked investors into buying this beautiful land in Jacksonville, Florida that actually wasn't located in Jacksonville, Florida, but was located 65 miles away in a swamp. Unfortunately, in 1926, the buying demand waned and prices collapsed as everyone started to collectively realize that Florida was a cool place, but it wasn't worth the prices that they were paying for it. Sixth up is the Wall Street crash of 1929. During the 20s, the US stock market skyrocketed as tons of Americans started taking out loans to invest in the US stock market, believing it could only go up. They kept investing despite the fact that a lot of the companies they were investing in weren't bringing in the revenue or weren't producing any sort of value to actually back the prices that they were paying for the stock in the company. Eventually, some investors started getting nervous and started selling their stock, which caused a market panic and everyone to realize collectively at once that they had overpaid for all these stocks, which caused the entire market to collapse. Seventh up is Japan's real estate and stock market bubble of 1980. Japan went into a recession in 1986, and the government wanting to counter this recession decided to launch a monetary stimulus policy. They cut rates, allowing cheap lending with little to no accountability. Which obviously this is sounding eerily familiar to what we recently went through in the United States. The stimulus worked and caused massive speculation by the general populace into stocks and most importantly land. And at the peak of this hysteria, an empty three square meter parcel in a corner of a shopping district in Tokyo sold for over $600,000 even though it was actually too small to build anything on. And Tokyo's imperial palace was valued more than all the real estate in the entirety of California 
combined. Of course though, these absurd valuations couldn't last and eventually the bubble popped, causing the entire system to collapse and people lost a lot of money. Eighth up is the dot com bubble. Similar to the railway mania bubble, this bubble happened after a new disruptive technology called the internet came out and people started speculating on the future value of this technology. People believed that this technology would reshape and change the way that we interact with the world as we know it and started speculating on the future value of internet companies. As more people speculated, the prices skyrocketed higher and people stopped paying attention to any sort of market fundamentals and started just throwing money at any internet stock that came along. Then the Fed started raising interest rates, the market collapsed, causing the dot-com companies to lose more than $1.7 trillion in value. And just for comparison's sakes, the entire crypto market sits at about $1.2 trillion right now. Of course, the internet did eventually become the massive innovation that everyone thought it eventually would be, and some of these companies went on to become some of the biggest companies on the planet. Planet. Last up is the US housing bubble of 2008. And this started after average US citizens were given access to vast amounts of capital to invest in real estate with little to no accountability, which happened to be exactly what happened just 20 years earlier in Japan. During this time period, some people working minimum wage jobs owned three or more houses. Because of this, of course, housing prices rapidly went up in value. This caused a mania around real estate. Eventually though, the house of cards came tumbling down and the entire thing collapsed. So after learning all this, I had a few takeaways. The biggest thing I think is that if the asset you're investing into has no actual fundamentals, it has no actual problem it's solving, it has no source of revenue, no profits whatsoever. If that's the case and you're speculating because that investment's going rapidly up in value, then you're probably gonna lose a lot of money. It seemed like at some point in almost all these examples, the general populace decides to collectively throw out all common sense, all fundamentals, and just goes bananas investing into things they think will go up in value, speculating on the future price of assets with a complete disconnect from all reality. And this seems especially true if it's a new technology like the railroad or a new technology like the internet, as well as if it's an unexplored territory like South America or this new mysterious place like Louisiana that could have all this gold. So essentially greed coupled with us not really understanding something because it's new can cause us to disconnect from reality and do really stupid things. So anytime you see a new technology or a new thing that people don't understand that they're investing a lot of money into, just be cautious. Number two, obviously, it was interesting that some of these innovations really did go on to absolutely change the world. Railways were a huge technological innovation and so was the internet. The investors were right that it was an innovation, they were just wrong about the companies they were investing into. A lot of those early internet companies were absolutely worthless because they didn't have any problems they were actually solving. They had nothing really to show for their efforts or work. And lastly, I thought it was really interesting that both Japan and the US had these massive bubbles and recessions because they had these stimulus policies where they you know, gave people access to really cheap lending, poured a ton of money into the economy, and, and people took that money and started speculating on things like real estate and stocks. And I find that interesting because that seems so similar to what recently happened in the US when we had COVID and all the lockdowns. So they started doing all these PPP loans where businesses could get really easy access to all this capital with little to no accountability. Interest rates, of course, went way down where people could take out loans to buy houses. Again, really easy access to capital and funding on top of the fact that they literally gave free money to almost every single American that they could spend on whatever they wanted. And during all this, we experienced a massive move up in the stock market. We experienced a massive move up in crypto and real estate and the prices of all these different things started going up as people started really speculating on their future value, which all sounds extraordinarily familiar to what happened in Japan and what happened in 2008 with the US. And I'm not saying we're in a bubble, I'm just pointing out how eerily similar these situations all are. Let me know your thoughts on all this below. I'd be really interested to hear some of your guys' opinions. Was there any patterns I missed? Do you see a correlation that I didn't see between between you know, the modern day where we're at right now and you know some of these things that have happened in the past. As always, if this video is helpful, make sure to hit that like button. And if you wanna see more videos like this, make sure to hit the subscribe button, but you gotta also hit the little bell next to it if you wanna actually be notified each time I release a video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.